Hello engineers, we are going to wire a control circuit such that a siren will have to activate and sound for a particular time and then turns off before we can manually start our induction motor. Until the siren stops, we can't start the motor. This is AC supply. The siren is 24 volt DC. So we use DC supply. The rest are all AC components. When the siren is activated and you press on the start button, there is no way the contactor would energize unless the siren stops. Let's see. Now the siren has stopped, we can now energize the contactor. So let's see the control diagram and then we do the wiring. This is the circuit. We have overload relay 2526, normally close, time one, relay one, contactor, stop and start push buttons. This is the siren. The timer, relay and contactor, they all operate on AC voltage. The siren operates on DC voltage. So I provided DC power supply to the siren through normally closed contact on the R1. When the AC breaker is switched on, current will flow through the normally closed contact of this overload to energize the timer. The timer will then start counting. This is normal OP contact on the timer. When the DC breaker is switched on, current will flow through this normally closed contact on the R1 and then the siren would activate and it will start sounding, indicating that we are about to start the motor. Therefore, when the siren is activated, there is no way we can energize the K1 or start the motor because this R1 is not energized. So this contact is still open. When you press on the start button, because this contact is open, there is no way to energize unless the timer finish counting. When the timer finish counting, this open contact on the timer will close. Therefore, the R1 would energize. When the R1 energizes, this contact will close. This contact will open. Then the siren will deactivate and stop sounding. In this case, because this contact is closed, we have a closed contact here. So when you press on the start button, we can now energize the contactor and start our induction motor. This is basically how the circuit operates. When the overload trips, this contact will open and the whole circuit will de-energize. Therefore, this contact it is going to close back. In that case, the siren is going to activate again to indicate that there is a problem. So the siren is serving two purposes. When we are about to start the motor, the siren will activate and when there is a problem or when there is a fault in the circuit and the overload trips, the siren would again activate and give us indication that there is a problem. Let's begin the wiring. Let's attach the overload to the contactor. From line 1. 95 of the overload. This is line one. From 96 of the overload to timer curl A1. Seven and two are the timer curls. They are AC, so you can connect live at either seven or two. Let's connect at seven. We tap from the timer coil to one side of the timer open contact. These are the contacts. 8 is common, 5 is normally closed, 6 is normally open. So we tap from the coil to terminal 8. This is terminal 8. From the other side to R1, A1. From terminal number 6, this is 6.
We tap from the eight on the timer to one side of the open contact on the R1. From the other side, it goes to one side of the stop button. From the other side, that is two, it goes to three on the start button. There are two. You use this side. There's three. From the four on the start button, it goes to A1 of contactor. This is A1. Now, we wire normal open contact, that is the hold on, on K1, in power with the start button. 3, we go to 13, on K1. This is 13. Four to fourteen. This is fourteen. We are done with this side. Let's connect the neutral, the neutral to timer on the terminal 2 the main neutral came to timer A2 from timer A2 it went to relay A2 from relay A2 it went to K1 A2 so they are going to be loops this is the loop on the timer. Let's join another cable. Relay A2. Then to contactor coil A2. We are done with the whole section. It is left with the DC part, the siren. Now, we will connect positive 24 volt to one side of the normal close contact on the R1. This is our DC breaker, the positive and negative. Positive will go to normally close contact on the R1. From the other side, to the positive terminal of the siren. This is the siren, 3 to 24 volt DC. This is the positive cable, the red. Negative cable, the black. The positive will now connect to the relay. The negative cable of the siren will connect to negative 24 volt DC supply. This is the negative 24 volt DC supply. Therefore, I will join them together. We are done with the wiring. We are coming to test. When you own the breakers, the timer would energize. 
and start counting. The siren will activate and start sounding or blowing alarm. In that time, we cannot energize the contactor unless the siren stops. Let's see. You see? Now that the siren has stopped, we can energize the contactor and start our motor. As I press on the start button, the contactor is energized. When I press on the stop button, it de-energizes. When I press on the start, it energizes. Now, the motor is running. When there is a fault in the system and the overload trips, the siren would activate again and it will blow a sound indicating that there is a problem in the system. When it stops, we can then energize the contactor and start our motor again. Let's see. I am tripping it by pressing on the red button. Now that it has stopped sounding, we can now energize our motor again. This circuit is used in industries. Whenever a particular motor is to be started, a siren would have to blow an alarm before we can start that particular motor in emergency situations. So if you did not understand the whole concept, kindly go over again, watch it again, and you would understand. Whatever comments you have, let me see it in the comment section. Like the video and share the video to your friends. Please kindly subscribe if you are new to this channel. I will see you in my next tutorials. Thank you.